up everyone? My name is Sarah Dietrich Rhymes with Peachy. Welcome to another video. Yes, today we're talking about the worst thing about being a YouTuber, but we have an exciting video. There's, there's some art magic going behind me right now. I was gonna make an entire video about this, but I couldn't think of a whole thumbnail and title for it, so. <sighs> What's up everyone? I'm gonna let you in on some YouTube education in this video, but if you don't care about getting views or being a YouTuber, stick around because there's some exciting stuff. And New York is choosing to be a little bit more noisy than usual, so excuse the podcast microphone. So you've watched all of the filmmaking YouTube channels, Corridor Digital, Video Copilot, Film Riot, which by the way, I got to hang out with Ryan, more on that later. You're ready to post a YouTube video. You spent hours, if not days, perfecting the edit. Hours and hours of filming and prepping, and yet when you're ready to post your video, you're scrolling through the timeline just looking for a screenshot for the thumbnail. No. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm caught in this trap a ton and I'm here to say, don't do it. YouTube 101. So what's one of the worst things about being a YouTuber, you ask? Well, it's the fact that all of your work comes down to two things, an intriguing title and a equally intriguing yet simple thumbnail. In my experience, thinking of a title, thinking of a thumbnail can take as long as actually making the video. <laughs> Mr. Beast, who is killing it on YouTube right now, obviously, he actually has multiple thumbnails and multiple titles that he will switch out on the hour, every hour, until he sees those views go up, until he sees those analytics go up. <laughs> so yes, essentially this entire video is kind of like a YouTube tutorial thing about thumbnails and titles. First lesson is to have multiple options and do not be afraid of switching them out. I spent an hour on this beautiful thumbnail. Oh, it's so nice, but it just stopped. The views just stopped at 19K. Literally, no one was watching it. YouTube was just like, yeah, we tried to throw this on the recommended page, but no one was clicking on it. So we're gonna stop it dead in its tracks. Change the thumbnail to more of just the classic YouTuber thumbnail. Made the title more focused on GoPro instead of this mystery man that no one knows about, but you should, he's awesome. And boom, it got back in the recommended and gained over 16,000 views just from changing those two things. Thumbnail lesson number two, simplicity just wins and make sure it's obvious what is happening. I spent over a week making my past video and I made the mistake of not dedicating time to taking a picture for the thumbnail and it bit me in the butt. After trying to figure this out, um, hours before I was actually supposed to post it, you know, very last minute stuff, John swooped in and was like, hey, let's just take a picture. And then we started Photoshopping and we had a thumbnail duel. So which one would you choose? You can vote up here. I'll wait. Which one did you vote for? Me or John? Well, this is John's and John actually won. It was way more clear what was happening. He actually photoshopped the background of the sky to be more consistently blue so you could see the laptop better. Thank you, John. So the thumbnail and title really should be one of the first things that you think about. And well, I guess it doesn't hurt to also have a YouTuber boyfriend. Also, this is in the context of like, you wanna be a YouTuber, you want more views on YouTube, it's practical advice. In the beginning, I didn't care about thumbnails and titles. I just made good videos. It was a good way to start out, but this is for you people who, who just, they're thirsty for it. So the final lesson is CTR, click through ratio. This is really all YouTube cares about and it's a very important tip. But before that, I gotta hang out with the original DIY filmmaker, Ryan Connolly. Oh my God, he has special place in my heart. He taught all of us how to do the things with the camera and the editing. Uh, and I'm very excited to announce there is another collective contest. These are contests that Lacy is sponsoring. I'm part partnering with them to make all this content around the person who's throwing the contest every month. This month, it's Film Riot. Look, I'm here with Ryan Connolly. Look how exciting this, where'd he go? 
What? Where do you oh. go? We just got done with an epic interview. It's for the collective contest that you should sign up for right now. But what is it about? What are we doing It here? is the action scene challenge. You, you're making a 60 second action scene, whatever kind of action scene you want. There's tons of different things that you can do, but it's all about making it in your own voice. Like we keep saying over and over again, because that is key and capturing your audience's attention mm -hmm. with a badass action scene. Yeah, there can be punches, actually, kicks. That's perfect. Is that perfect? I, I think, think I'm gonna submit one. I think you one. just won, actually. Yeah. Prizes are yours. Which is $10,000 worth of $10,000 worth of prizes. Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera, Lacie Drives, Drones, all of the things. So hopefully Ryan's face was a good surprise. It probably in this wasn't. Video. <laughs> it was, they're like, damn it. <laughs> um, he obviously has the epic YouTube channel, Film Riot. He makes short films. So we're very excited to work with him on this collective contest. So submit now, link in the bio. Hey, we're talking about how to make YouTube videos, getting more views. This is an option to get $10,000 worth of prizes. If you're not clicking on that link below and at least trying, Okay, so the third and final lesson is CTR. Pay attention to click through ratio because it's the percentage of people who see your thumbnail, see your video on their watch page or recommended versus how many people actually click on it. This is the one huge metric that big YouTubers are focusing on. And I actually got a chance to sit down and talk to Jarvis Johnson about it. He's gonna be on the podcast next month. Yes, it's coming back. Make click through rate go up and average view duration go up and you have a successful video, mm -hmm. as long as it has a, um, a big enough audience. The reason that a lot of channels are homogenous now and not variety is due to what happens to click through rate when you vary. I mean, I just see this play out uh, a lot of the time, but it's far better to be like, I'm making these videos right. that are like this. Right. And there's consistency and like, what people are getting on the other end. Well, that's why I stopped vlogging. Because mm. when I, I mean, I really had a, I did four to five different versions of the video. And I said, okay, what's a good combo of what I enjoy and also what works? And it was tech. And I'm like, okay, I'll just take the fun, funniness and switch that in yeah. a little bit of tech. Even now, when I think about uh, like a video I just made recently about YouTube. I'm now nervous to even do anything that's um, kind of like advice driven because it doesn't have a tech type attached to it. So something very exciting that is coming to our analytics soon is live click-through ratio. So we'll be able to change our thumbnail, change our title, and directly see how it affects that percentage. So that's going to be a great tool. So I know we're getting technical up in here, but just want to, you know, spread, disperse the knowledge um, for you people out there because YouTube is such a powerful tool to storytell. And obviously the more eyes that are on your stuff, the more opportunities you have to tell your story, which is exciting. <laughs> so speaking of that, I'm going to end this video on a very exciting and creative note because this is me selfishly hoping you clicked on this video so I can share with you a little bit about my very talented artist friend Michael Shellis. Okay I hear the the art piece is done. It is. We need to explain a little bit so this is my friend Michael for the OG Peachy fam for season three Creative Space TV. A long, time ago. a long time ago. Was that two, three, four years four ago? Four years ago I think. Wow. Like we Texas were playing Hopkins? guitars together yeah. seven years and, ago. And like a band together. You were always playing like all of the things. I just played guitar. Really well. Oh, thanks. Really well. Thanks. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, I texted Michael. I was like, listen, Loki moved into a new apartment and there's this big blank wall that needs to be filled with some beautiful art. So I was like, hey, if I fly you up to New York, will you pay me something? Worked out great. Love his art. You can check him out on the Insta. So I think it's time to check it out. I haven't seen the final product yet. Okay, this is where I get the most nervous. Her and John kind of are taking New York over together and almost like they're falling into this city and falling in love into the city. Kind well, because it also beats you up too. So and that's York, why I haven't moved here. <laughs> I'm scared of it. Because New York is this beautiful city. It's great if you can like take it on with someone, but it's also really hard to like live and work and it's like this beautiful love-hate relationship. So one of my favorite scenes in Spider-Man uh, Multiverse, if you haven't seen it, it's amazing, you need to watch it, is where like the Drake song comes on and then he's like flying upside down and the city's upside down. And then also the Mad Men intro is kind of like that. So I was like, can you kind of do that vibe? But it's like John and me and... With my own flair. And I've always wanted to do a piece of street art in street art in the place I fell in love with street art. That's what we did today! You ready? Yep. One, yep. two, three. Yep. 
There is um, a lot of the New York City street art vibe in the background. Uh, there is my doodle that I used to get paddled for because I would write out, I would do it on my arms and my head coach was like, boy, you're trying to map tattoos. And tattoos are a sin. We're from Texas. Yeah. You know, if you can't tell. Nice. It's kind of in and out. And then the the whole idea is like they're holding hands in the middle, falling into the city together. And the drips up are uh, more of an enlightened thing. Uh, I just feel like it brings a piece. It brings a piece up. It makes it feel uh, positive rather than rather than everything yeah. coming down. Last thing to sign this video off is let's go surprise John with it. Let's go. Let's go. Keep your eyes closed. No. Hi, John. I, I gotta be on this side so the, the yeah. light's better. Guys, we actually added some new new flair to the painting. This is what's good about sleeping on it. Is you, you sleep on it and you come back the next day and you have a completely different idea of what needs to be added, just a little pop. Yeah. And good. we added a little outline so it really <laughs> pops it off of the uh, whole piece. Which oh, other way. Oh my god. Do you like it? I love it. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> It's so elaborate. I, I know, muscle, and that's Michael. Dude, this is Nick. Nick. <laughs> Excuse me, I've been looking at your face for the last like four days. <laughs> it's gonna go. It's gonna go there. It's like too good for us. <laughs>